Welcome to Lemmings.com in our lab video series on MPLS. You can find a complete list of MPLS video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this lab, we are going to extend what we have learned in the previous videos on route target, but instead of importing and exporting the whole routing table, we are just going to perform an export only on certain routes from the routing table. This is also known as selective route target export. And we are going to demonstrate this through a provider managed CE scenario. For lab physical topology, we still have eight routers, R1 through R8 and one switch switch one with R2, 3, 4, and 5 connected with a serial point to point links. And then the other routers are connected across layer two VLANs as designated on this diagram. Okay, moving down to our layer three topology in the middle, we have our MPLS core that's been fully configured. Our startup config for this lab is going to have MPLS VPN configured already for the two VRF, VRF C1 that has site two, three, and four as part of that VRF, and then second VRF C2 that we're going to be using to simulate our provider management network, and that is located at site three. We are running BGP for our PECE routing protocols and for VRF C1, we are using the AS number of 65124 for all of our three sites and for the provider, we are using AS number of 65010. Let's take a look at the scenario that we have. So R6, R7 and R8 are managed CE routers that needs to be accessed from the provider management network, which is being simulated by switch one loopback 10. Okay, so for our task number one, manage CE, we need to create first a loopback 1010 on the all of our CE routers that source our R6, R7, and R8 with these IP addresses. And then we have to configure R1, R2, and R4 to allow only loopback 1010 on the CE routers to be accessed by switch one loopback 10 only. Okay, we are allowed to use two new route target, 10 colon 1 and 10 colon 2. And then any traffic between CE routers is on different PE should not be allowed. Okay, so let's go and take a look at the diagram one more time. So each of these CE router has are going to have a loopback 1010 configured. And you can see that these IPs, we intentionally assigned the IP that's actually part of the provider network 1010. And as in the real world, these are usually the provider assigned IP since the provider needs to access all these IP from the management network and they need to be absolutely sure that these IPs are unique. And that's why they usually give you their own IPs. And then the concept is going to be pretty simple as what we saw in the previous video with the extranet. So we're going to have to somehow allow the route to be exchanged between the provider VRF, which is C2, and the customer VRF, which is C1 in this case, but we're not going to be exchanging the, the whole routing table. We're just going to exchange the route that the provider needs to access. In this case, it's the loopback 1010. As you could imagine that all these C routers would be located in the customer sites and all of the PCE IPs would be provided to the customer, except on the management loopback IPs that needs to be accessed by the provider. Okay. So let's start our configuration with creating our management loopback 1010. The first route we're going to do is R6. So let's get into R6. And for R6, do interface loopback 1010, and then IP address 1010.3.6, and 255, 255.255.255 slash, uh, this is 32. And then we need to make sure that route is being advertised into the MPBGP, so 65124, the network since there's no verb or anything on the CE routers, 10.10.3.6, mass 255, 255, 255, 255. Okay, do show IP BGP just to make sure it gets in there. See right here, 10.10.3.6. Next we'll create a loop back on router seven, 10.10, 10, IP address 10.10.3.7. Then router BGP 65.124. Network 101037 10, mass 255. There you go. The IP BGP just to make sure 3.7. Then we have our router 8 10 10 10 10 3 8. Router BGP 65124. 10, 10, 3, 8, mask, 
by 5. All right, now let's get into router R1 just to look at the route. Show IP, BGP, VPN, V4, all. And we should be seeing, although we're not quite seeing the route from R8 yet. Let's go and double check on R8. Did we miss on something on R8? Let's see. There you go, let's just take a couple seconds here. So 3.8 just showed up. It means if we redo that show command, we should be seeing 10.10.3.8 in there as well. And the way we're gonna get the route exchange to happen, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use two new route target. We're gonna tag the loopback 10.10 IPs with the RT using the export of 10.1. And then we're gonna import the provider management network routes by importing another route target of 10.2. And obviously on the provider PE, it's gonna be a reverse of that. So it's gonna do an import of all the CE loopbacks, which is 10.1. And then it's gonna export the its own switch one loopback to the management network with a route target of 10.2. And this way only the CERN route get exchanged between the two VRFs. Okay, the way to do a selective route export. First we come up with a prefix list and we're gonna call it CELO 1010 and permit. We know that the way the loopback IP has been allocated is coming from a subnet 1010.3. So we can just do 1010 three zero slash 24 let's stand equal 32 and then we have to create a route map we're just going to call it export map permit 10 we're going to match the ip address of c in the square loopback uh hello 1010 and then this is how we're going to set the route target route target is basically a extended community and here you, we said that we can export it with the value of 10.1. Okay, now we're gonna have to apply that to the VRF. First we do the route target import of 10.2, which is the management subnet routes that we can attack when we configure the router R4. And then to apply that route map to the route export process, we use the export command then map, and then the VRF export route map. For us is export map. Okay, and to kind of show you what we have right now, we have our existing route target import export for the value 100 colon 100. Just to get a detect effect, we're gonna have to kind of remove the default route target and then reapply it, okay, just to kind of activate the route map. Not sure why, but that seems to do the trick. And now if you do show IP prefix list detail, you can see that we now have a hit count of two. Two, since we have a two loop back for the two router R6 and R8 right now, that's why we get two hit counts. And now if you do show IP BGP VPN before all, if you look at 6600, you can see that it's still being tagged by the default route target, which is 100, 100. And now if you look at the 10, 10, 3, 6, you can see that particular route is only being tagged with the route target of 10, 1, and we don't, do not see the value of 100, colon 100. And that's because it first got caught by the route map before it gets processed by the default route target. We have to repeat the process on the router R2. So we're just gonna fly through that quickly, or actually, let me do a show run. Prefix list, let me bring up a notepad just to save us some configuration. So copy all this. Okay, copy that, R2, paste, and then IPVRFC1 route target import 
and then export map and then do a just to show you if you do show IP prefix this detail you can see we don't really get a hit counts right now until you remove the default route target and then we apply it and here we get the hit count of one which is the loopback of R7 right and then you show PBGP VPN V4 all 10 10 3 7 just to verify it's really tack with the value 10 1 and it is okay so now we have configure R1 R2 to advertise the loopback 10 10 with the tack of 10 1 which is going to be imported by the router R4 so now let's go ahead and complete a configuration on R4 but R4 itself do have to selectively export its loopback 10 so first, same process, come up with the manage, uh, prefix list for the management subnet, 10, 10, 0, 0, slash 24, route map, export map, permit 10, match IP address prefix list. Oh, looks like I have a typo. Match IP address prefix list. Set external community. RT 10, zero, uh, 10 2. And one thing I want to mention to you was when we configure the route map for uh, right here, R1 and R2, we did a set community of uh, RT 10 colon 1, and then we completely replaced the default route target, which is 100 100, with 10 1. And that's because we have uh, the task mandates that the traffic between the C routers on different P should not be allowed. So that way, if we didn't do that, then the loopback 1010 would still be tagged with 100 colon 100 and that would be imported by the other PE routers. So by replacing it completely with a RT of 101, it would not be imported. Hence, would, there would be no communication between those loopback addresses between these two PE routers. So going back to what we were actually doing, if we do a question mark, after the set community RT, there's actually an additive options. That means that on top of the default import export, we're going to add this uh, RT uh, route target to the existing export route target. And this is to maintain basically connectivity if, for example, our provider networks also have another site that's part of that BRFC2 and we still want the management uh, loopback 10 here to be imported by the other PE device then we're going to have to maintain the RT export of the 200-200. So for that purposes, we're going to do additive for this. And now we get under IPVRF C2, route target, import, 10-1, and then export map with the export map. And then just to trick it the whole thing, remove the default route target and then put it back on, do show IP prefix list. So now we haven't got the hit counts. Let's do a show run IP VRF just to check. It looks like we have what we need, but we can try to remove a route map one more time, a route target rather. There you go. It's just got a hit count, so we know that's good to go. Let's double verify that with the show IP BGP command. And you can see how the R4 is now learning all of the loopback 1010 remote routes, which is R6, R7, and R8. See, it's coming across as the with the route distinguisher of 100 colon 100. And now, if we go to the switch one right here in the back. And we do a test ping from loopback 10 just to verify connectivity from the management network to the remote management loopback. First, we do show IP BGP. You can see that switch one is seeing all those loopbacks also. And then we do ping 1010.3.6, sourcing from loopback 10. There's pingable, seven is pingable, eight is also pingable. And we can also try to telnet just to be absolutely sure although you would use SSH if you were to manage remote devices. Here, just try Telnet. You can see that 
we can lock into R6 successfully. Okay, now what about other network on switch one? See if we can try to ping R6 one more time, but this time source from loopback 11. You can see that it's not working. Okay, because we're only advertising, or actually we're advertising all the loopback, but loopback 10 is the only subnet that is being learned by the remote PE routers. Okay, now to verify from the other side, from R6 to show IP BGP, you can see that R6 is learning right here. Switch 1 loopback 10. It's actually also learning switch 8 loopback 1010, and this is because they're both, uh, both site 1 and 2 are sharing the same VRF, so the browser actually gets exchanged directly without going through the whole MPPGP, but if you don't want the CE device to be able to access each other directly using its loopback 1010, then what you have to do is just split the sites into a separate VRF and then go through the whole import export for the route that you want to want to be exchanged. We're just gonna not gonna go that far in this lab, but that's just more like FYI. So now we're trying to ping 101001, sourcing from loopback 1010. See that's working just fine. On the other hand, if you try to ping R6 to ping R7, so 10, 10, 3, 7 from that loopback, you can see that's obvious, obviously not working because the routes that's being exported or advertised by R2 has a tag of 10, 1, but 10, 1 is not being imported on R1. Okay, it's only being imported on R4. And last, let's try to check the ping to 101038 then obviously R6 can ping R8 right now but nevertheless it meets our requirement right here that the traffic between CE routers on a different PE are not allowed. Okay so that should complete our task for this lab. Although we didn't really show you how to do a selective import which is very similar to what we just did with the export but instead you do that at the receiving routers. So let me show you the command real quick. Let's get under IP VRF C1. Just very similar to what we did with the export, there's also an import command that you can tie a route map to to selectively choose the route that you want to import to that particular VRF. You can see, uh, you can specify IPv4, unicast, or multicast, and then the route map. Okay, the concept is the same. And we just didn't show that on this lab. And you can match it pretty much based on the prefix list as well as the route target value itself. Okay, so that wraps up our video on MPLS VPN Manage CE. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com, and I'll see you guys in the next video.